Happy Wonder Wednesday. I'm wondering if you know what Dia de los Muertos means. I'm excited to share more soon. When I have a worry-filled mind I like to wander outside No telling what we might find Birds calling, worms crawling Leaves falling down from above Oh, I plant my feet on the ground I keep my head in the clouds I let my feelings out loud I hear joy calling Fear crawling, tears falling down out of love. Welcome, friends. I'm so glad you're here. How are you feeling today? This moment, right where you are. Maybe start by checking in with your color zone. If you're feeling like you're a little tired or moving slowly, maybe in the blue zone. If you're feeling really clear-minded and ready to go, you're in the green zone. If you're feeling a little distracted or overwhelmed, you're in the yellow zone. Or if you're feeling like you've really lost control, you can't think clearly, you're in the red zone. You can also look at my feelings poster. And notice the different faces. Maybe there's a face that looks like your face right now. The way it is squinting its eyes or punching its nose or snarling its mouth. Try your best to name the feeling that you're feeling right now. It's okay if it's more than one feeling. It's okay if you're not quite sure yet. It's a great time to practice. Naming our feelings can really help settle our mind and make sense of what our body is telling us. It can also help us better understand the world around us. If we keep dropping something over and over and getting really frustrated, it might be because we're feeling a certain way. It might be because that we are actually really distracted by our emotions, but we haven't paid attention to them yet. So now's a great time to do that. Thank you so much for checking in with your feelings and trying that out. Remember, if you sign up to be a Patreon at any level, you'll get an automatic free download of that feelings chart so you can use it every day, even if I don't see you in my video. I want us to take a peek at the date today so we can get started moving our bodies. It is 10, 27, 21. And maybe you remember that means the month is October, the day in October is the 27th, and the year 2021. Fantastic. Let's check in with Fig and see what shape they're making with their body. They're giving us a clue about an exercise we'll do in just a little bit. Notice how their arms are almost twisted across their body. See, one of their legs is out a bit. We'll check back in with them soon. You are welcome to make some guesses or continue making those observations. We're going to start with 10 shoulder stretches. And you can do these sitting or standing, whatever is best for you. We're going to take our shoulder and stretch it up over our head. And you can put a little bit of pressure on your arm by pushing down. And then we'll switch and do the other one. So because we have the number 10, we can divide it evenly into two groups of five. And so I'll start by doing counts of uh, one through five on one side, and then we'll switch and do the other. Sound good? Let's get started. One, two, three, four, five. Let's switch. Six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Oh, that feels good. Now, Fig, what are we going to do 27 of? Ooh, opposite toe touches. 
legs big. So that means we're going to stand up and our right hand will go down and touch our left foot and our left hand will go down and touch our right foot and we'll take turns doing one at a time counting all the way up to 27. Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, We have one more move to do, and I thought we could try something a little bit new. I thought we could try backwards push-ups. That might sound a little strange. What you need to do is find a surface. It could be a couch, a chair, a low table. You'll put your hands flat on that surface and almost like you're backwards <laughs> in a push-up form, you will go down for each count. And we'll do 21 of these to represent our year. Now they may feel tricky. It's okay if you can't get all the way to 21 or if you need a little break in between. Listen to your body and do what feels good for you. Let's do 21 backwards push-ups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Oh. Maybe your arms are feeling warm or a little bit shaky like mine. Go ahead and take three deep breaths with me to cool down your body. Let's listen for those bells. Maybe you remember our flower and candle breaths. You're welcome to try those with me too. It takes just a little imagination. Second breath. We're pretending to sniff a flower and then blow out a candle. Final breath. so much for moving your body. Hopefully building those muscles is making you feel stronger and setting you up for a healthy rest of the day. I was wondering earlier if you knew what Dia de los Muertos meant. Do you know? It's Spanish for Day of the Dead and it's a holiday that's celebrated near the time that some of us celebrate Halloween. It's a little bit after on November 2nd. On October 31st, many of us will dress up in costumes as characters or creatures and go around our neighborhood and share treats or special things. It's also a day called All Hallows Eve, and I have a little bit more information about that and the other special days in our message. Dear creative and compassionate kids, do you know that there are three important days coming up for our Latinx family, friends, and neighbors? Many people in or from Mexico, as well as some people from Central and South American countries, will celebrate several special days in a row. All Hallows Eve, El Dia de los Inocentes, the Day of the Innocents, and Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. These celebrations are a time to remember and honor loved ones that have passed on. Death is sometimes upsetting or scary to talk about, but it's a part of nature, and all living things will one day die. I think Dia de los Muertos and all of these celebrations are a really powerful and beautiful way 
to celebrate life and remember those that are no longer living here with us. What do you think of Mrs. A? This is a really long message today, so there are lots of alliterations hidden in here. Alliterations are when there are words next to each other or really close by with the same letter or sound at the beginning. It's also a pretty big topic. Maybe you have heard of Day of the Dead. Maybe this all sounds new to you. I'm excited to share some books with you so we can learn more. Let's start with this book here. It's called The Day of the Dead, or El Dia de los Muertos, and it is written by Bob Barner, translated by Teresa Millar. And I really like this book because it's bilingual. That means that it is written in two languages, English, The Day of the Dead, and Spanish, El Dia de los Muertos. Now, this book has a lot of really colorful illustrations and rhymes if you read through each page. But what I want to share with you is actually in the back. It tells us a bit more about the Day of the Dead, or Dia de los Muertos. It says, Millions of people from Mexico and parts of Central and South America observe one of Latin America's most popular holidays called El Dia de los Muertos in Spanish and the Day of the Dead in English. It is a special time for remembering loved ones who are no longer living and it's celebrated every year from October 31st until November 2nd. People prepare for the holiday by baking or buying special foods. Pan de Muertos, or bread of the dead, is a sweet bread baked only for this special holiday. It has a tiny skeleton doll baked inside. The person lucky enough to find the little skeleton in his or her piece of bread can make a wish that will come true. Sugar skulls, calaveras de azúcar, come decorated in bright colors. They can be eaten at the end of the celebration. People also gather the favorite foods of their deceased loved ones. Tamales are a popular treat at celebrations. They are cornmeal cakes filled with meat, wrapped in a corn husk, and steamed before eating. Altars for the departed, decorated with sempasuchil, or marigolds, and candles, are displayed in homes and schools. Sweet-smelling incense is burned to attract the spirits of the departed. On the night of November 2nd, families go to the cemetery. They spread the petals of marigold flowers, burn incense, and light candles to welcome the spirits to the celebration. Then they dance, sing, have a picnic, and share memories of their loved ones. Families leave the flowers on the graves at the end of the celebration as they begin their journey home. The popular Mexican artist, Jose Guadalupe Posada, inspired some of the skeleton characters in this book. His engravings of skeletons and the skeleton lady with a large flowering hat, La Catrina, have become symbols of the Day of the Dead holiday. So if you'd like to read this wonderful book to learn a little bit more and hear those fun rhymes and practice your Spanish, then I would definitely recommend it. This next book has a collection of real photographs, and I really like to see how people are really celebrating. It's great to be creative and see beautiful illustrations, but it's really nice to learn real true facts exactly as they were. And if you notice, the cover here has an example of a sugar skull or a calavera, and it is actually made of paper. So much creativity goes into the Day of the Dead and the celebrations that follow. I'm just going to show you a few pictures. It looks like this friend has their face painted. Here it looks like there's a parade with a ton of colorful arrangements and kites. Here I see some banners and bags. 
on the altar. Oh, and here's that bread we heard about. The pan de muerto. The bread of the dead. So as I mentioned, this book has a bunch of great photographs and information if you would like to check it out. That is by Julie Murray. And last but not least, I want to share this book with you. This has such playful illustrations and also tells us a bit more. It kind of takes us through the day as if we were celebrating along with everybody. And so I just want to share a few pages with you, but I think you should definitely check this one out. It's called Dia de los Muertos by Roseanne Greenfield Thong with pictures by Carlos Ballesteros. Let's check it out. A black and white photo of Grandpa Padilla, who's riding on horseback just like Pancho Villa, and toys for remembering small angelitos. A train and a dollhouse are both favoritos. Now this one doesn't have all of the words in English and Spanish, but as I'm sure you heard, it has some. We share in the foods that our guests loved to eat. Fresh fruit and tamales, a holiday treat. And clay pots of grandmother's fresh chicken stew with mugs of atoll, a chocolatey fruit. Just like we heard in that description in the back of the other book, they are celebrating with tamales and food of their ancestors. As candle flames glisten, our smiles are bright. Our ancestors know we are with them tonight. And if you look really carefully at this beautiful and playful illustration, you can see there are a lot of smiles glistening. And there are a lot of people moving around and dancing and really celebrating their ancestors. I see people playing music people sharing foods and drinks. I see flowers and banners. I think this is a great reminder of how we can show our ancestors um, who have passed and our family uh, and our friends that are with us how to love and honor each other. I think it's also a great opportunity for us to be creative. And I have a couple ideas to share with you, but you can always use your creativity however you feel. Um, creativity is something that is different for each of us and different day to day or minute to minute, kind of like our feelings. And so I wanted to share a couple of small things that you might try if you're interested or curious, or of course you can create however you're inspired, especially if you're thinking of a loved one who's maybe no longer with you, you might feel inspired to create something from a memory of them or something to kind of honor them, let them know that you're thinking about. So I have two things here to show you. One is some paper flowers. And I just have these paper flowers made of tissue paper, which often comes in gift bags or sometimes packages that may arrive, and some pipe cleaners. And you can bundle up different colors and connect them however you'd like. They're twisted all together at the bottom here. But it really reminded me of all of the flowers that are used in the Day of the Dead celebrations. And you can also make a calavera, a sugar skull. Now, I did not use sugar to make this. I used a piece of white paper and I folded it in half to cut out a skull shape. And then I used something called oil pastels. And I liked to use th those pastels because I drew things on one side and then I fold it up and push down so the same shapes and designs would be on the other side and then I traced them over to make them a bit more clear. But sugar skulls are often symmetrical, meaning they have the same thing on each side. And so it was really helpful for me to use those oil pastels. Um, you can even use some watercolors or paints and have the same effect. If you notice this example of the calavera or the sugar skull um, is symmetrical, like I was mentioning, the same on this side and that side. And so you can really use any materials that you have lying around, pencil, paper, anything at all, 
and you can get creative and make whatever you're inspired to make. Now for our mindful moment today, I thought we could do some stretching. And this pose is really calming. You may be feeling overwhelmed. We just learned a lot about Dia de los Muertos. And you may be feeling a little confused, like, oh, I, I don't celebrate people in that way, or that's new to me and it might feel unfamiliar. Or you may be feeling really excited to create or make something new. And so I think it's important that we get our minds focused and our bodies centered. And so we can do this calming pose and this calming breathing. And then you can go off and use all of those ideas and think all of those thoughts. But it's really nice just to get settled before. So to do this calming stretch, we will put our legs crisscross. So you can sit on the floor or on a nice comfortable flat space and we're going to take our hands and put our palms down on our knees so they should be resting gently there make sure your back is up nice and tall we're going to take three big breaths let's do it Make sure you fill your belly up really, really well with as much air as you can get. And then really slowly let it out. Let's do one more big breath. Take a minute to listen to your body. What do you notice? How is it feeling? Is it feeling any differently as you were breathing those big breaths in or letting those big breaths out? Did your hands feel comfortable on your knees? I know sometimes I like to put my hands palms up so I felt really challenged in a good way to keep them down. It felt different than what I usually do. What about you? Thanks so much for taking that mindful moment with me. You can go ahead and get comfortable in a position that works for you. Maybe that's staying crisscross. For me, it was putting my legs back down. I hope that you make it a wonderful rest of the week. I hope that if you're celebrating in the next few days, Dia de los Muertos or Halloween or anything else, that you have a really fabulous time and that you use your creativity. Sending you off with some love, a hug if you'd like it, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>